Hey there, Bolt Action here. Cbax here with BoltAction.net. Today I'm going to bring you um, and show you a review of two models from Blitzkrieg Miniatures. First is their um, Sherman model for the Americans, and next is their Half Track for the Americans. Um, recently, I sold off all my Americans to a friend of mine locally. I got those Americans in a trade with a friend. He had a very distinct painting style, which didn't match mine. And I was not confident in my skills to be able to match his painting style, and he has since moved out of uh, state. And so I sold those to another friend of mine who was looking at uh, getting into a second army. He originally had Germans and wanted to do an allied force, but doesn't have a lot of time to paint. So I sold those off to him, including all the vehicles in the collection, um, and decided to start over. And I used the money to buy a brand new army, from mostly from Black Tree Designs and some Warlord stuff. Um, in the process of selling all those things, I got, like I said, I got rid of the vehicles, which was quite the collection, um, because... It, I wanted him to be able to have the vehicles necessary to really play the Americans and enjoy them. And so um, I used some of that money to buy new vehicles from Blitzkrieg Miniatures. I think Blitzkrieg Miniatures is an awesome company. They're by far one of my favorites. I tend to game um, with all my models in 148 scale when possible. I have very few 156 scale stuff. And so because of that, I mostly end up having to rely on plastic model kits and conversion kits, um, a lot of secondary market stuff, some... Some things like die cast models, things like that, um, and um, those can be great. I like the scale. I like the way it looks a lot better than 156. I think 156 just looks a little too small for my taste, especially when you have those heroic scale miniatures on um, on on bases that maybe are a little thick. You know, the bases are a lot about like that, so they tend to stand a little higher. That seems a little off to me, um, especially when I look at pictures of vehicles from World War II and guys standing next to them. It seems like they're a lot bigger than what 156 scale can offer. Downside of doing 148 is that there's not a lot of kits available. Um, or you have to spend a lot of time building kits, plastic model kits that can be hours of um, hours of frustration. Or like I have a tendency to stick my um, stick glue on my fingers and by the end of the night my hands are just gobbled in glue and, um, and just in an awful, awful condition. Or my hands stuck to the table or stuck to a small fiddly pit piece and then just it, it, it can be it can be a very um, interesting evening around the Baxter household. So when possible I get 148 scale vehicles from Blitzkrieg Ministers. They are one of the only manufacturers out there that is making um, resin model kits in 148 scale. They also do 156. They have a much larger range of 156 scale vehicles. Um, and, but they have a, a pretty decent range of 148. Their 148 scale miniatures is, um, our vehicles have been expanding slowly and they, they sell a lot of the core vehicles that you need. So your Sherman, your Panzer IVs, your Panzer threes, half tracks, things like that. The very, the most common stuff. They have a lot more specialized things in their 156 scale range. Um, so I took some of that money that I got from selling my old Americans to buy new Americans, mostly from Black Tree, some from Warlord, and then, um, decided that I didn't really have the time or money to invest in plastic model kits, conversion kits, things like that. Um, and I didn't want to spend all the time on the internet trying to find good deals or buy die cast, things like that. And so I went ahead and bought uh, three Shermans and two half tracks for my Americans from, um, from Blitzkrieg Miniatures. Um, Blitzkrieg Miniatures offers free shipping when I think you hit 75 or 100 bucks or something like that. They used to do free for any order. Um, but that ended up being not very uh, cost effective for them, which is, which makes sense. They're in England. They got to ship stuff to Australia and America and Canada and kind of all over. Um, so I got those vehicles and they recently came in and man, are they, they're, they're some of the best vehicles I've ever put hands on. Um, I've had several vehicles in the past that I've gotten from them. I think I have a Tiger, a Panzer three, I've got a Panzer two. Um, a couple other things um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've always been very pleased. But these vehicles are absolutely outstanding. So this is one of the Shermans. As you can see, um, it comes in two pieces. There's a hull and there's a turret. So here's the turret. As you can see, there's a, a hatch on the top. There's a, a turret mounted machine gun, a spot for your, your main gun here, and then kind of this pedestal. What I really like about these pedestals is that there's no miscast on them, and so when they rotate on the hull of the turret, you don't get kind of that wobble that I've seen sometimes with some manufacturers as you spin the as you spin the turret. There's also a spot on the top if you want to put an antenna, um, and so it's it's actually it's a really really nice kit, and I really really like the turret. It's nice and solid, nice and firm, nice and hard, and there's zero cleanup. 
I mean, there's no reason to take a hobby knife or a file to this. All you would probably need to do is give it a good wash and then prime it and then it's ready to go. And I'd probably prime it. I, I usually prime all my vehicles black and then I get a, um, I get uh, like a like an army primer that would match the color, so like an olive drab or something like that, that would match the color of a Sherman tank. Um, that makes painting them very, very quick. So I'm going to set that aside and then show you off the hole. The hole, how awesome is this? One piece tracks are not separately assembled. That is awesome. One of the biggest frustrations I have as a model kit maker with 148 scale is assembling tracks. You, you glue more fingers together and more bits to your fingers when you're dealing with tracks than anything else. Those tracks are already assembled, they're already attached to the actual model themselves. The only pop spot where there's any sort of weird miscast or anything is in the bottom where it looks like there was an in the injection went for the resin. And that's going to be hidden, there's no reason that you would need to clean that up. Um, lots, like I said, lots and lots of detail, a little bit of stowage on the back. Here on the top you can see tools. Um, you can see there's a spot here for for the actual machine gun. There's little bits, and I'll show you those bits in a second, which include that machine gun, and and then the area where the uh, the turret's going to go. Excellent, excellent model. I ended up getting three of these, and so as you can see, these are here's the three of them. They are pretty sweet. Um, I am super pleased with them. I got three of them because I wanted to be able to run a Sherman platoon uh, using the tank the tank kind of platoon option, or to be able to do scenarios. Uh, like Bachman's Corner or made up scenarios where you have a larger amount of American armor. So um, one of the other things before we show the rest of the bits, I wanted to compare this to um, a Tamiya kit, same vehicle, same same uh, make, model of Sherman. Um, as you can see, they're spot on. So if you have Tamiya kits um, or other um, plastic model kits, you're going to be able to blend these almost seamlessly and people are not going to be able to tell um, that one is from Blitzkrieg Miniatures and is resin, and one that is, one that's a, a plastic kit. Um, it's just they're spot. On. They're so good, and they're so amazing. So, um, as you can see here, there's almost same height, same width, same I mean, same everything, same dimensions, same everything. Um, so, in this kit or in this uh, set, I also got this little baggie of goodies. Um, in here, you can see there's barrels and hatches, and then I'm not going to pull them out because I don't want to lose them. There's really tiny little machine guns as well. So I want to show you something on the barrels real quick. Now Blitzkrieg does all their barrels in the same resin um, that they, I, I believe that they cast their models in. You may want to think about replacing this with a piece of brass rod. As you can see, I'm going to just give it a little flex. This bends quite a bit. And the worry you're going to have, especially on something like a, a turret, is that it's going to get dropped or bumped in storage or during gameplay, and you might snap that off. It it, it does have quite a bit of give, um, so brass rod would be a good way to go to replace it. Uh, you may also want to just attach it and hope for the best. I I all of their barrels are resin. I have yet to break one, but it is a concern I think that people should be aware of um, because that that resin is is flexible as opposed to something like a brass rod or a plastic um, that is not going to be as flexible. Um, there's really tiny little machine guns, like I said, I'm not going to pull those out, and those are going to go right here in the front um, for the, the whole mounted machine gun. Um, again, you could replace that with a piece of brass rod or a nail of some sort, a little tack, tack piece to, to kind of cover that up. Um, those probably aren't going to break, they're really, they're really tiny, and, and it's highly unlikely that they're going to be bumped, but they could, and if they are, they're likely going to break. Um, the only thing I um, I was kind of bummed about this model was that they did not come with uh, 50 cal for the top of the turret. So um, Blitzkrieg makes 50 cals. They include them in other kits. Um, and so one of the things you might think about doing is when you order them is see if they can cast you some 50 cals or some 30 cals to throw on top of the, um, of the Sherman. Up next, we're going to review the um, half tracks that we got and kind of take a look at those and see the quality detail and some of the extra bits that come with So those. here are the two half tracks I picked up. Again, just like the Shermans, they have excellent, excellent detail. Um, almost zero cleanup is required. The only thing that I can see where you're going to need to do a little work is here in the windows. There's a little bit of flash in those, and that's really going to take you, what, all of three seconds with a hobby knife to get in there and just clean it up. Other than that, you still have those injection spots on the bottom, which nobody's going to really see, so I wouldn't spend any time cleaning those up. It looks like there's a little bit of um, cleanup that might have to happen here and here where the front wheels go in. 
um, just to make sure that those wheels get a nice good fit um, and are attached appropriately. But other than that, excellent detail. You've got lots of stowage. You've got the trucks in the, or the uh, seats in there. You've got stowage on the back, stowage and kit on the side. Awesome detail on the on the um, tracks. You've got the winch in the front, which looks awesome. You got headlights, which I mean, those headlights protrude out, man. And there's, I mean, there's no flash or cleanup around there. What's also cool is you've got the the three mounts for machine guns on the sides and back. So if you wanted to put 30 cals on there, you definitely could do that. Um, for upgrades as well. Now these kits, here are these half track kits, they're going to come with um, this kind of Coppola for their for the, the 50 cal, um, they come with a 50 cal, they come with a 30 cal, and they come with two wheels. So the wheels here, as you can see, these are going to go in the front, there's this kind of a, a peg hole in the back, we're going to slot those onto the front of the half track. Um, these are, I mean, these are as gorgeous as wheels can come. There's no, I mean, I don't see any mold lines. There's a, there's an injection spot here on the bottom, but I'm sure if you just mount that facing down, no one's going to see it. Plus, even if you had it facing to the side, you're probably going to do some weathering work and things like that, and it's not going to be noticeable. Uh, the Coppola does is going to need a little bit of cleanup. There's some rough spots where you're probably going to need to take a hobby knife or, or carefully file that down, um, and that's going to go right here on the front, um, and that's where you're going to mount you're going to mount this 50 cal. It's going to go right there. This 50 cal is pretty neat. It has lots of detail. you got a box for ammo. You do have a barrel. Now, this is an all resin piece, just like the uh, barrel sit tank, so you do have that flex and give. So you want to be careful with that in storage and during gameplay. If it breaks off, you're probably going to need to replace it with a brass rod, which would probably be fairly easy. Just drill that, um, drill, drill the gun out a little bit. Um, it's going to mount, I think this is going to be a lot more protected than some other pieces because it's going to mount like this right on, this, on the top. And so because it's over this uh, engine compartment here, you're not going to have as many problems with it bumping because you know, on the turret here when you put, if you were to mount a 50 cal on the top like that, or if you, were, or if you had the barrel in the front, you're going to have this piece rocking and rolling and things is going to fall off and bounce around and it's going to hit the ground and things like that and you're going to have problems. Um, you're probably a little more safer on this. Um, the other piece that comes with the kit is a 30 cal. This 30 cal can be mounted on the back or on the side. Um, they only get one. Um, I don't know if Blitzkrieg would make extras for you. I would definitely recommend asking them. Um, I don't see, I mean, worst case scenarios, they say no, right? Best case scenario, you get a bunch of extra 30 cals and 50 cals. In fact, I'm thinking on my next order for my Shermans is to ask for, or my next order that I send in is to ask for a bunch of 50 cals for my Shermans. Um, and then extra 30 cals for my half tracks and see if they'll go ahead and... So here are the final products, uh, totally assembled. I think it took me all of 45 seconds to put these together. First we've got the Sherman. All I had to do is glue on this barrel to the turret. You can see that's mounted um, right there where it's supposed to be. Again, be careful with the barrel. Just be mindful of that. And then right up here at the front, I don't know if you can even see it here, but you can see that little machine gun to poking out. I don't think that that's going to break at all, actually. Um, so, Sherman done. As you can imagine, if all you're doing is gluing a barrel in uh, for a main gun and for a machine gun, you're probably not spending a lot of time putting these together. You're going to be able to paint them up pretty quick, and you're going to be able to get them on the table. So, excellent, excellent choice if you're going to do Shermans. Um, even if you're a Soviet player, you could pick a couple of these up and do them as Lin Lease. They'll be awesome. The uh, half track took a little bit more time to assemble. I did have to do a little cleanup down here, like I pointed out, um, to get these wheels on, but really it was mostly nothing. Had to do a little bit of cleanup here on the Coppola. Um, but again, it, I mean, I scraped a good portion of it off just with my thumbnail, actually. Um, they took a hobby knife in there to clean it up. Glued the uh, 50 cal on there. It's pretty secure. And then I glued the um, 30 cal on the back. So, again, that's going to be an awesome, awesome model to uh, put on the table. Um, and to kind of throw out there for your American Force, um, especially with the Season 2 format rules where half tracks are a lot more useful. Um, I want, I've got two of these right now. I'm thinking about picking up about three more of them because one, I'm crazy, and two, I kind of want to do an armored rifle platoon for my Americans, and I think it'd be great to just be able to have that as a whole collection to be able to field that as a themed force or in a scenario game. Um, I hope you like this review. We're trying to do a lot more video stuff here um, at boltaction.net as we uh, kind of transition. Um, it's a little bit easier and a little more interactive and fun for us. So make sure you leave your comments below and let us know what you think. Make sure you go check out Blitzkrieg Miniatures and let you know, let them know you heard about them from um, boltaction.net. All right. Happy wargaming, guys.